In this episode of Detroit Performs, a camp brings the joy of art to youth. An organization teaches valuable work experience and a look inside a cooperative warehouse for artists. It's all ahead on this edition of Detroit Performs. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Funding is also provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm at Friendship Circle's Farber Center, home of Soul Cafe and Soul Studio. We'll learn more about this place later in the episode. But first up, Ann Arbor Art Center holds fun and educational youth art camps. We had the pleasure of hanging out with these kids during one of those sessions. Take a look. Through art, kids are able to express themselves and share with others something that's important to them. Art is what you feel. You really try to incorporate your feelings into it. It makes me feel like I have kind of like a lot of power over what I do. Art's like a universal language, so whatever language you speak, imagery, you can evoke feelings and emotions. We love taking the opportunity to, every day to meet our goal of lighting that spark in kids and making them feel really passionate about art and sharing that love for art with them. This camp really develops um, love for art and that's how I got mine. And even if you're one of the youngest kids here, you're still gonna make pieces that resemble Da Vinci's and Picasso's and it makes you feel like you're doing real art. Are you doing professional art? Maybe not, but it feels like it is. So it's like really fun to see how it turns out. Ann Arbor Art Center offers two different kinds of camps. We have Creativity Camp and we have Clay Camp. And Creativity Camp focuses on multimedia materials, so both 2D and 3D materials. And Clay Camp focuses exclusively on using traditional clay that you would fire in a kiln. Our themes between the two camps always are pretty similar. For upstairs in Creativity Camp, uh, what they're doing is comics and creative characters. So some of the groups are doing comic books, uh, some are really becoming invested in learning how to do character design, how to exaggerate and play with the different elements and principles of art to create cool visual narratives or really exciting dynamic characters. With comics, they can really come up with their own characters, their own environments, a backstory. They're pulling in writing skills, some history, all sorts of drawing and three-dimensional skills. I mean, these kids are so capable of plot lines and all the different twists and turns, and they just go wild with it. Superheroes and comics are pretty cool. I was making onomatopoeia. It's like the words in, in the comics where it like Boom with like all those pointy things around them. I painted Boom. Me and my friend Abby are sharing a comic and it's about this world up in the clouds with all these different creatures. For Clay, it's throwing on the wheel and creative characters. So working on character design in addition to throwing on the wheel. We either choose our superhero or our villain that we want to resemble. We're gonna, we were supposed to make them a cup, a plate, and a bowl that they would be eating something in. The fun thing is they let you take the ideas to the next level and even two levels up. They really let you play around with your character and help you create what you want. I would imagine that if I looked at some of those comics this week, I would see themes that are, that are important to, to those kids and maybe even on a personal level are important to them. My character in is in charge of the whole world and he decides to have a competition between 
the happiest character and the saddest character and they have like magic powers and they try to make people happy and they try to make people sad. Our kids really do a great job within five days of, of learning a lot. Throwing on the wheel is particularly tricky when you've never done it before. And our kids within five days, most of them go home with five pots that they created during the week. It also helps to have a high instructor to camper ratio. So we have two instructors for 12 kids and so they're able to get the help from their instructors. Uh, and we occasionally have some teen volunteers who are former campers who have um, been in our program in the past and they want to stay engaged with the Art Center. They're all amazing instructors. They all help you a lot. They give you great tips. Art education is really important to the youth in our community because it's such a great opportunity to really invest yourself in something and focus on something and think about process. Process is so important to all sorts of different professions. You know, step by step, how do I do this most efficiently and effectively to achieve my goal? Art is like one of those times where they can just sit down and they can focus and they can create something. They're not disrupted by any other technology going on. They're just focusing on a project and then they're going through that process of trial and error, trying to get it to work. Um, and then they have a complete project afterwards. And so our kids are so excited for the Camper Art Show on Fridays. You know, the moment their parents walk in, they want to show them everything they made that week and say, oh, mom, dad, look at what I did right here. It's really fun to see what you can make. You can have an idea in your head, but it might not turn exactly how you want it, but it still looks cool anyway. And part of me, you don't have to make it look exactly like what you want it to be, because it might resemble something else, but it still can be what it is. The way that we want our camp to feel when kids are arrived is that this is a welcoming place, that everybody is accepted, everybody is here to make art and feel comfortable. From week to week you get kids of all different backgrounds and experiences and personalities and by the end of the week there's new friendships and I think that they just love the experience here and they keep coming back for more. I want to sign up for this next year. You can learn more about Ann Arbor Art Center's art camps as well as all the artists we feature on DetroitReforms.org. Next up, we see what Friendship Circle is bringing to these incredible artists and the surrounding community. Art is something that really equalizes everyone. It's a language that can really kind of be used in any and all circumstances. I love art. So a place I can do art and feel good about it, it's a reward. I'm able to be proud of myself and it's all good for me. I mean, I think the smiles speak for themselves. I think when you come in and you see the adults and you see them working and you see their confidence in what they're doing, it's really, I think, incredible. Friendship Circle's goal is to be a space where every individual is being viewed as the person who they really are on the inside and to find that person's key strengths and allow them to express themselves and be who they are as well as being there for the general community to teach them about the beauty of people with special needs. Basia and I got married in May of 1994, and uh, our goal as in building a life together was to dedicate it to helping people in a specific way and under the inspiration and teachings of a rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. His teaching was based on the fact that when you see a person, see them for the soul that's inside of them, not for the outside. <laughs> we started with the idea of soul, and we said, what is it that will make a soul shine? And art and cafe both came back as, as good ideas. Uh, cafe, because it lends itself to vocational training that a person can then later go on and get a job in another place, in another restaurant. And also, the cafe is good because it brings in people from the community and it exposes thousands of people every month 
to this beauty and then they come into the studio. The mission of Soul Studio is to really find the talent within. Every single human being has a special strength and talent. Those with special needs have a much stronger strength in certain areas that you and I don't have. We are able to tap into those talents, many of whom don't even know that they have that artistic talent, all of a sudden find it within themselves. When artists come in, we actually try to get them to test out and try out the different forms that we have. So they could come in and learn how to weave from the first piece of information that they need for that. Um, they do felting here, sewing, purses from scratch, pillows, blankets, rugs, placemats. We have a laser studio. We have the ceramics, the fine art, mixed media, woodworking. We have a shop bot, CNC router. The artist creates something, it gets sent into the router. Furniture. Printmaking is actually a new one that we have that's been very, very successful. For some reason, our artists really take to that. Some mediums lend themselves more to somebody who may have some motor issues or, in fact, maybe some memory issues where if they learn how to weave, their muscle memory kind of kicks in and they can go back and forth and their, their body remembers it more than maybe their mind does. I have a very... Um... Uh, it's called Korea Aiken So I told you before I was I designed suit for the piston and I came here. I fell in love. My life is it's one day at a time. Soul brings me away from Grief and sorrow. I have a disability in art therapy. It is really beautiful, uh, and it, it's something special and different. And uh, they're not as uh, self-conscious and inhibited, and they're they they're free. Artists that are coming to be part of Soul Studio, they decide what they want to register for. And then whatever we sell, they get 40% from all of the fine art, or all of the original pieces that they create. We have 900 volunteers, both teens and adults, in both our centers. The reason why they're drawn to come here, nobody's begging them, because it is such a loving, accepting community. And when you're in that kind of environment, you know, individuals with special needs, many of them are not inhibited by what people think of their work. They're just creating. So they're able to really express themselves genuinely. And with the guidance of our teachers and our volunteers, they're able to perfect their skills and create something really beautiful. I think they do especially a great job of kind of embracing the mistakes and helping people realize that sometimes the mistakes are what make a project because what they considered a mistake is really what turned it into something completely unique. The food at Soul Cafe is the best. We contracted out with Epicurean and the Milk and Honey is a kosher division of it. They manage our restaurant. Our part of that is that we have our head trainer, Kim Kaplan, who's a retired special ed teacher, and we have 14 participants that come throughout the week, typically eight to 12 hours in the week. And that's when they are training and learning how to do back of the house work, front of the house. And as they learn the different skill sets, they grow in what they're able to work at the cafe. They actually get paid hourly, and they also pay to be trained. I bust tables, do dishes, or sometimes whenever they need me to do food prep, I'm able to do it like I did this morning. When I get done with work, I feel accomplished, uh, like in getting some checks to deposit. The Soul Cafe is such a great opportunity where 150 guests a day, and Sundays even more, will come through, have awesome food served and helped by individuals with special needs, and then they are encouraged to come back to the gallery and the studio and observe the artists, and then purchase some of the artwork. So the cafe and the studio and gallery is meant for the general public to come in and enjoy it. Our hope is that by bringing the awareness of what we have, of the beauty of their soul, of the beauty of that each and every one of them brings to the world, 
we're creating an inclusive society all around, which is important to us. Now, let's check out some upcoming events happening in and around the D. The Generator is an inclusive art space built in Sparks, Nevada that invites all artists to make art in a supportive, creative hub. We believe in this idea that if, if everyone has the ability to build their dreams, then people will natively and inherently do that. We have this, this idea that if we want to change the world, we need to give people the tools and resources to change the world. The Generator is, uh, at its core, a community art space. It's, it's meant to be a place where we can provide tools and resources that most people may not otherwise have access to, so they can build and create. When I went to Burning Man the first year, it was just massively inspiring. There were artists and builders and, and, and creators who were just making things for the sake of making it. And I thought that was really brilliant and inspired me to build a community in which we shared tools. And from there, this idea kind of grew that, hey, if everyone has tools and resources, then there's no excuse for them to do anything other than make something incredible you get a sense of real freedom in here working and hanging out there's no one telling you what to do you're in this huge space full of machines and people trust you enough to use it and that gives you this mental freedom to focus on what you're doing and really use your imagination it really is an incredibly robust space it's so fantastic to me to think that we have a 4,000 square foot wood shop a 3,000 square foot metal shop, a laser cutter, there's a ceramic studio. Upstairs is our sewing studio. Uh, we have a gallery, a tech room, and just this kind of huge variety of tools and resources to effectively make whatever you want. It can almost be a bit intimidating when you walk through the space and, and notice that there are very few restrictions on what you can create. I, I tend to do things to the limit of what's available and since there are big machines here, I, I'll use them when I can. We currently have 32 resident artists who really want to create, have a chance to build something fantastic as an artist in their personal career or their professional career. I'm a resident artist here at The Generator. I have a business called Cornercraft and I make furniture and lighting and build just about anything, creative building, and I needed a new place to build. And when I came in here and finally started using the equipment, I just fell in love with the space.
We're really excited to see businesses form here and take their business and create it in the real world. But we've tried to create a space where you don't have to worry about money. This makes it a lot easier, and not just easier, it makes it more interesting, the possibilities are bigger, the things I can do, the, the type of materials I can work on are all expanded. I don't think a lot of us are used to, used to working in a world where the sky's the limit. And I think initially it can be a little bit crippling and when people really figure out what they want to do and find a focus. There's a tool to build just about anything here. You can build a trinket or a bridge and everything in between. Anyone who does any kind of art, they come in here and they see, oh, the space is so big and they can make big art. Library Babel was a piece that Work Macmillan did that was a 30-foot tall Babylonian style library with handmade books and handmade paper. Carrie Lynn built her crepe cart here, which is a business that she started where she sells crepes around the city. We as a team built Embrace, uh, which is probably our most notable piece, uh, which was a pair of 64-foot tall people in an embrace that were made of wood, about the same scale as the Statue of Liberty. There's been so many projects that have come out of the space. Every summer we have between five to ten different international teams that come to the space and build a number of things. There's this really amazing arts community in Reno and Sparks. And the arts community has always been in my mind kind of like a, a series of islands and we kind of hope to make it into an archipelago. If we can bring people together who are being creative and help support them in ways that help them become more creative, will create a cultural hub in Reno. And that cultural hub will naturally attract more interesting, compelling artists and creatives and, and individuals who may be a little weird, maybe a little strange, but want to change the world. We just hope that we will continue to draw inspired, creative, driven people to Reno, and those people will create a better city. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Reforms. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitReforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on coming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'd like to thank Friendship Circle for having us here at the Soul Cafe and Soul Studio. I am so excited and eager to eat this food, y'all. Until next Tuesday, get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I'm DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Funding is also provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.